Hey guys, welcome back to Revitless. I'm Sandeep and for the past few months or maybe close to a year, I've been getting a lot of questions in the comment section and on Twitter and other social media about 5G. And many people have asked the question, when is 5G coming to India? Should they be buying a 5G phone for the future? Uh, what are the advantages, disadvantages of 5G? And many such questions. So this video will focus on 5G and more specifically 5G in India and answer all of those questions that you would need to know. And I'll break it down into the positives of 5G, the negatives of 5G, as well as the positives or the reasons why 5G could come to India and the negatives or reasons why 5G may not come to India as soon as we expect and overall uh, give you an idea on what is 5G, whether you should be buying a 5G smartphone etc. Now before we get started please do hit the subscribe button if you want more videos like this and also give us a thumbs up at the end if you happen to enjoy this video and do share it with your friends and family to also help them get a better understanding of what 5G is and whether they should be waiting for it or not. Now let's get this video started. So what exactly is 5G? To put it simply, 5G means the fifth generation of cellular networks. And like we have seen 2G, 3G and 4G in the past, the primary uh, premise of 5G is that it offers much faster speeds uh, for download and upload. And it's also able to reduce the latency in the connection uh, as well. Now, theoretically, 5G can achieve crazy high speeds and many people across the world have even shown in their speed tests that they can achieve speeds of 2 gigabits per second for example I have a fiber connection at home that just does 1 gigabit per second you know while 1 Gbps is also amazing and kind of overkill for practically 90% uh, of the people who use their smartphones uh, or you know other connected devices it still is great to have and in order to reduce the amount of time that you spend on downloading something or uploading something or kind of reducing the amount of time that it's needed to buffer a particular video particularly in terms of higher quality content. Now 5G has some other advantages but it also has a few disadvantages which is something that you need to know before we discuss about 5G in India. Now here are the negatives of 5G or kind of the uh, limitations or kind of requirements of 5G that makes it a bit difficult to roll out and makes it a bit difficult to end up in the hands of every single consumer. The first and foremost is that 5G is very hardware dependent. You cannot actually just release a software update and thereby enable 5G on devices with 4G, 3G etc. So this is a hardware dependent feature that requires a 5G modem on your device uh, and without that you can't really connect to a 5G network. So I know that in US AT&T for example has started showing 5G E which is basically uh, a scam. You actually get just 4G but they are just showing 5G E in order to kind of uh, please customers or kind of make them uh, trick them into thinking that they're actually having 5G but no it's actually 4G. So if you want 5G, you really need to have a smartphone with a 5G modem in it. Now, the disadvantage of this is that it's kind of expensive to implement and the implementations that we have seen so far uh, on devices with 5G has been very, very expensive. Now, if you look at the uh, Galaxy Fold, which is the highest uh, price smartphone in India right now at Rs 1.65 lakh, even that does not come with 5G. Of course, we will get to a point that 5G is not available in India, so they don't necessarily need to bring a 5G variant uh, of it to India. But if you think about it, any device that is currently available in the market, if you're adding a 5G modem to it, it would automatically increase the price. So take the OnePlus 7T Pro, for example, uh, it's already priced quite high, above 50,000 rupees. And if you're adding a 5G modem to it, that'll increase the price of it by another 5 to 10K rupees at the very least. And that means that you'll have to spend out more amount of money uh, into buying a 5G smartphone, especially if you are an early adopter. So yes, that would mean that we would generally see 5G on smartphones that are generally higher end so that the pricing actually does not increase much on smartphones in the lower end segment. So for example, if they release a Redmi Note 8 Pro 5G version, the number of people going for it would be very less even if there was actual 5G in India considering that you have to spend more amount of money on the smartphone just to get the 5G cellular connectivity. And now uh, next year Xiaomi has announced that you know at least 10 different devices will be coming with 5G capabilities uh, from Xiaomi themselves and they've also announced that anything over a price of around rupees 20,000 would automatically feature 5G. 
So these technologies over time they get cheaper. It's like exactly how 4G started or even 3G started. At first it was limited to just the flagship devices and over time they became cheaper and now practically every single smartphone that is being released in India comes with 4G and not, not only 4G, it comes with 4G LTE uh, with dual SIM capability. So almost every device that comes out has dual 4G uh, connectivity and even 5G will slowly make its way onto these devices as well. But the question is when, uh, how and at what cost? So in order to truly understand that, you need to understand how 5G works basically and compared to 3G, 4G etc which uses megahertz frequency in order to transmit the radio waves onto your smartphones, 5G is very different because it uses millimeter waves. Now millimeter waves is very similar to what you get on Wi-Fi. So you have 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi etc. So this also relies on similar gigahertz uh, frequencies in order to transmit uh, data onto your smartphone. So it makes use of 24 gigahertz all the way up to 100 gigahertz depending on the implementation in order to do it. And like you may have guessed, the disadvantage to this is in terms of the range, in terms of the basic coverage itself. So if you notice in your home, if you have a dual band Wi-Fi router for example, you'll notice that the 2.4 gigahertz band actually goes further. Say you go to the uh, furthest corner from your router you would probably notice that you won't be getting any 5G signal if you have a regular router or if you have a really powerful router you'll still notice that the 2.4 gigahertz band has more range uh, or more reception compared to the 5 gigahertz band and that's simple physics because the higher end you go in terms of frequencies the lower the range or the distance that they can travel. Uh, I'll, I'll give you an example where you are outside a club and you're listening to uh, the music. So inside the club, you'll hear all these vocals, you'll hear all these high-end notes, uh, and you'll hear the bass. But when, once you step outside the club, what you hear is just the bass. And that's because the bass is actually very low on the frequency range, and that is able to travel through walls. Uh, but when it comes to uh, higher end millimeter waves, uh, like Wi-Fi and 5G, the issue is obstacles such as uh, walls, buildings, um, you know, trees, plants or any small object even, uh, if it comes in your line of sight or in between uh, you and your 5G node, it actually can cause a reduction in speed and can affect the performance of the 5G signal itself. Now, what this means is that you should consider 5G more like you're considering Wi-Fi rather than having it like a tower. So what happens in the case of a regular cellular tower is that it, it goes uh, to a much wider area of coverage compared to the 5G node and as a result 5G node basically needs much more uh, units to be placed all around in order to have full coverage. So the other issue with 5G is that if you have one node here and say the next node a kilometer away you will have a point in between where there is no connection whatsoever. So you won't be able to go from one 5G spot to 5G uh, like you have 4G in cities like Bangalore for example. So in order to truly have proper 5G coverage, what you need to do is have a lot of nodes. Imagine Spider-Man. Spider-Man uh, weaves his web, uh, holds on to one and by the time he's about to leave, he goes on to the next one. So you need to have that sort of a connection between the two, a slight overlap to make sure that there is no dead spot in between these and you don't switch back from 5G to 4G in between. Now assuming that we figure out that part, the other limitations or the other problems of 5G is basically heating. So your device tends to heat quite a bit, especially if the 5G connectivity sort of fluctuates quite a lot. Considering it's using uh, millimeter waves and the fact that you can easily lose uh, the connection to 5G, say you switch back to 4G, your phone will still be hunting for 5G, there's a very high chance that it will start to overheat as well. So if you guys remember back when 4G launched initially as well, the number of 4G towers was very limited, the, num uh, the, the kind of uh, coverage was also very limited, so even if you put it in 4G mode, it kind of always kept searching for 4G networks where you know, you only had 3G networks, for example, and that uh, made the phone heat up more than it should actually have done. And it also led to battery drain, which is why most of the 5G implementations you see uh, are on smartphones which have a larger battery capacity compared to regular smartphones. The S10 
plus 5G, for example, has uh, around 400 mAh more uh, than the S regular S10 Plus variant. So you need a larger battery. It also comes with heating. And most importantly, the current implementations of 5G don't really have 5G upload speeds. So while theoretically you can have crazy download speeds currently and people are getting it as well when all the... Uh, you know, factors and all the other variables align perfectly together, the upload speeds are still not that impressive. The upload speeds are still maybe one tenth of what you get at maximum from the download speeds on 5G itself. Now coming to the India specific portion, as I mentioned earlier, you know, practically every smartphone that's launched in India now comes with 4G, LTE and VoLTE support. So manufacturers are quick to adopt new technologies in India considering that the market is so dynamic and uh, they are so demanding uh, in terms of new features. All of you must know that, you know, if you look at the online comments, it's like what processor does it use, what RAM does it come with, what uh, does it support VoLTE, does it support MIMO, etc. So people here are very aware of technologies and what it means and uh, you know they really want the latest and the best considering that people here have a lower disposable income compared to some other countries in the west and they prefer to keep their phones for a longer time as opposed to changing it every year or every few months in some countries for example. Of course there are people in India also who constantly change their phones etc but then again uh, you know the gen general mentality of us Indians is like we like to uh, make an investment for a while and we like to change stuff only when there's something wrong with it and, and not just uh, to show off or just to uh, have bragging rights we don't change the devices so the negatives or the issues that India would face in terms of a 5G rollout is first of all the 4G uh, you know coverage in India itself is not 100% India is a huge country and you know I'm sure that getting 4G across to 100% of India is practically impossible there will be areas that have dead spots etc so even if you're looking at having 5G uh, in say the metropolitan cities or you know uh, even larger towns as well it still needs a lot of infrastructure to be present in order to have true proper coverage and that's going to be really expensive and that cost is going to play a huge role in determining uh, when we will see a 5G rollout in India considering that the telecom operators are already on a huge loss. They're having huge losses because of the competition which is driving them further down to decrease the rates and India currently has the cheapest uh, data plans and uh, cellular plans in the entire world and you know that's costing telecom operators a lot of money. Now, of course, we are seeing slow changes. Uh, Vodafone is almost bankrupt, they say, and now Airtel and Jio are apparently going to increase the rates in order to s sort of come back and sort of uh, at least not make such huge losses. So what that means is that we could possibly see 4G uh, services becoming more costly in India. And if and when 5G services come, we could see that that also will have a higher premium over the 4G services in India. But because of this lower disposable income and because of the higher cost that's going to increase, there is very little, and the fact that they're making losses of course, there's very little incentive for these brands to actually release 5G networks in India. So even if you say get a 5G phone from abroad, if there's no 5G network in India, there's no point uh, I mean, there's no point because you can't really use 5G networks in India. You will still be using it on 4G and you will just uh, have to live with it because there's no way to get 5G unless the operators decide to do something about it. And even when 5G actually rolls out, another issue that these telecom operators need to tackle is in terms of the congestion. So India is a country that's densely populated and certain regions such as Delhi NCR, for example, uh, I was there yesterday for an event, the Realme X2 Pro event, and immediately after landing, I noticed a huge drop in terms of the speed that I was getting on my Vodafone and Geo network. Both of them were extremely slow compared to a place like Bangalore, which itself is a densely uh, populated and densely crowded place. So this congestion causes a lot of difference in terms of the theoretical speeds that one can achieve. And if you look at the speeds that we are getting on 4G in India, that's kind of like what you used to get with 3G in the initial days. Uh, on most days, I get anywhere between 10 to 20 Mbps, which is not much. And I remember during my initial days of testing of 3G, I used to get the same results on 3G itself. So of course, the latency has gone down and 
when things fall right, you get much higher speeds. I've gotten up to, I think, 70 in the initial days of Geo when they were launching it. So that's certainly impressive. And definitely when 5G also comes about, it will bring about a huge change and a lot of scope and potential for much faster download speeds, lower latency, and also could help, uh, you know, bring about certain advancements in technology such as autonomous driving cars with lower latency. They can talk to each other, uh, minimize the risk, minimize the issues um, uh, or the possible issues that could happen with a decrease in latency and stuff like that. But those are things that are very, very far away. Right now, keeping all these things in mind uh, about the condition of the telecom operators, the cost uh, at which they are providing services is too low and yet the Indian consumer, the mindset of Indian consumers is that they don't want to spend too much. Uh, at the end, it seems like 5G rollout, although brands might have 5G enabled smartphones in 2020, I would kind of say that a proper 5G rollout will be 2021 or even 22 at the very least in terms of a proper 5G rollout where people can technically say that they're using 5G enabled smartphones and using it daily uh, for for you know their personal use instead of just going to a, say a shop and just testing 5G speeds just to post the speed test results. Now I also took some statistics for my friend who lives in London. He's on uh, E network and he is using 5G and even for him uh, he doesn't have 100% 5, 5G coverage and his results were somewhat mixed. At times he got uh, closer to 500 Mbps but most of the time he got around 300 Mbps in terms of download speed with 5G and of course uh, it should improve with time but then again even in London, a city like London there's not 100% coverage so it will definitely take some time for it to come to India. Now the question as to whether you should buy a 5G smartphone now or say even next year, I would say it's always best to let uh, technology mature and come to a point where it's better. So 5G smartphones now won't be as good as the 5G smartphone coming next year or two years from now. They'll be much better in terms of uh, heat, uh, in terms of the, in, they'll be much better in terms of handling the issues that I told earlier in terms of the battery drain. So they should have larger battery capacities by then or find ways to cram a larger battery into the phone. They should be more efficient at, at that as well. They should also be more efficient in terms of heating uh, or thermal uh, efficiency should be much better by then and lastly uh, you know it's always best to buy a 5G smartphone once the networks themselves are ready for it otherwise you you're going to invest more and end up not using what you bought the smartphone for in the first place so people who buy 5G smartphones and bring it to India now they won't be able to use it up until uh, the time that 5G network actually rolls out and by then there is a high chance that they would want to move on to another phone so that extra bit of money that they invested in it goes to waste. So you shouldn't buy a 5G smartphone in India now and not in the very uh, near foreseeable future either. And maybe closer to a trial time where uh, telecom operators are actually testing it out, then it makes sense to actually buy a 5G phone in India. So I would suggest wait till then. If you have any other questions about 5G or how it works in general, do let me know in the comment section below. Sorry this video has been so long, but I just wanted to cover all the points uh, and not miss out on anything. If I have done or have missed out on something, please do let me know and ask me questions in the comment section below. Thanks for watching this video. See you again in the next one.